This is a video presentation of an anatomic reconstruction of both the anterior cruciate ligament and fibular collateral ligament using autographs. The disclosures for the senior author are listed. The patient is brought into the operating room and induced under general anesthesia. A knee exam under anesthesia is performed to validate the clinical exam findings, including Lachman, Pivot Shift, and various stress exams. The graft harvest is performed first, beginning with an incision from the medial patella distally to the tibial tubercle. The central third of the patellar tendon is harvested with a 10 by 20 millimeter bone plug off the patella and a 10 by 25 millimeter bone plug off the tibial tubercle. The pes anserine bursa is approached and the semitendinosus tendon is identified and isolated. A large cob elevator, Metzbaum scissors, and the physician's finger are used to remove all adhesions from the hamstring. Next, using an open hamstring harvester, the semitendinosus autograft is harvested proximally and then dissected off the tibia distally. Next, a posterolateral corner standard hockey stick incision is made, extending 10 centimeters proximally from Gertie's tubercle for the FCL reconstruction. Dissection is carried down to the iliotibial band and the bicep femoris tendon. A common peroneal nerve paralysis is performed to minimize risk of postoperative foot drop. The bicep bursa is entered to confirm the FCL is torn. A traction stitch is placed through the FCL to facilitate identification on the femur. The FCL attachment on the fibular head is identified and cleared off. This location is about 8 mm posterior to the anterior margin of the fibular head and about 28 mm distal to the fibular styloid tip. A fibular head guide is used to drill a guide pin through the fibula that is over reamed with a 6 mm reamer. A passing stitch is placed. For the femoral tunnel, the iliotibial band is split and the location of the FCL attachment on the femur is identified using the traction stitch. A guide is used to drill a guide pin through the femur that is over reamed with a 6 mm reamer followed by a 7 mm tap. A passing stitch is placed. Medial and lateral parapatellar portals are made and the joint is insufflated with saline. This patient has a medial meniscus ram tear at the meniscotibial junction. This is repaired with an all inside technique using two fast fixed flex sutures. The ACL is completely torn and the ACL remnant is debrided on the femur and tibia. The knee is then maximally flexed and a beef pin is drilled anterior laterally out of the femur. A 10 mm acorn reamer is then used to overream the tunnel. The patient had a large radial tear at the posterior horn of his lateral meniscus. Two transtibial tunnels are drilled and sutures are passed through the edges of the radial tear. These sutures are then pulled down the tunnels to approximate the edges of the tear. Next, with the sutures from the transtibial tunnel repair acting as a vertical mattress ripstop sutures, six inside-out sutures are placed in a horizontal mattress suture fashion on the superior and inferior surfaces of the meniscus. Next, the ACL tibial tunnel guide is used to drill a beef pin, and then the guide pin is over reamed with a 10 mm reamer. The tunnel is cleared out and a passing stitch is placed. The ACL graft is secured first by being passed up the tibial tunnel and pulled into position in the femur. A 7 by 20 mm titanium screw was used to fixate the graft in the ACL femoral tunnel. Next, the FCL semitendinosus autograft, which was whip stitched, is pulled into the femoral tunnel and fixated with a 7 by 20 mm bioabsorbable screw. Next, the FCL graft is pulled through a channel under the superficial tissues and passed through the fibular tunnel. The knee is positioned in 20 degrees of flexion, neutral rotation, and a slight valgus force. The graft is secured with a 7 by 20 mm bioabsorbable screw. The ACL graft is secured in the tibia with the knee in extension and with neutral rotation. Two staples are used to secure the graft in a bone trough. The deep and superficial tissues are closed with suture.